Listen, Iman Gadzi is completely full of shit. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why. YouTube, at least in my opinion, is the best place online that you can learn skills ranging from how to code, to how to play a musical instrument, to fitness advice, literally everything and anything you can find valuable information here on YouTube. Now, if you're anything like me on YouTube and you've consumed content in the past under topics such as self-improvement, business, finance, and investment advice, strategies, tips, and techniques, then I'm pretty certain that there's one seemingly self-made, extremely impressive and successful young man that has made his way into your crosshairs via the almighty slash infamous YouTube algorithm. And that's of course who the topic of today's video is, Iman Gadzi. Iman really likes to ensure that his audience knows all about his humble beginnings. He really focuses on details such as the fact that he was born in Dagestan, a pretty run down and poor province in the south of the Russian Federation, where he states that he had a very abusive father that his mother ultimately left before remarrying, then with her new partner that they moved to the UK and London specifically. After moving to the UK, Iman details how his stepfather, just like his own dad, became abusive towards his mother, which eventually led to her leaving him, and then his mother works a tail off, oftentimes having up to three jobs just to be able to provide for Iman and this is effectively Iman's origin story. Why he was so driven and determined to succeed and be successful so he could repay his mother, retire early and pull the family upwards to trajectories that they could only dream of. This is obviously something that's extremely commendable and is sure to garner inspiration and motivate others to do the same because there's many people that will find themselves in similar situations. But then you of course have to ask the question, why does Iman really, really, really emphasize these details over and over again? And that is of course because he wants to be relatable to his target audience. He wants to be the man in his own story, the superhero archetype that defeats evil is through goodness and hard work and sacrificing to pull his family out of the gutter and to achieve greatness. Relatability and achieving success, especially in the face of adversity, is literally the bread and butter storytelling 101. Basically, this is the first of many of Iman's marketing tactics, which he utilizes brilliantly. Now, do I actually believe his origin story? Yeah, I mean, of course I do. I've got no reason to suspect that Iman's actually lying here. But I also do think he might be twisting the truth just a little bit in some instances. And why is that? That is to make his story seem even more impressive. Another marketing tactic. And when Iman actually moved to London, it's not as though he moved to some decrepit rundown council estate in the east end of London. Oh no, he moved into prime real estate in the west end. And I believe it was the Borough Kensington, which is like the postcode jackpot mental. It is honestly the prices there compared to the rest of the UK is off the chart. Meaning that his stepfather was probably an extremely, extremely wealthy individual. Seriously, spending your adolescence and growing up in a place like that whilst going to a private school in that area cannot be understated. The connections, influence, ideas, money that you're surrounded by from a day-to-day -day basis cannot be understated. That is like the sort of 1% of the 1% of the 1%. And this gave him an extremely good starting point for whichever endeavor he chose to pursue. You know, it'd be a completely different story if he was from some really poor borough of London or from a post-industrial northern town like Blackburn or Burnley or Sunderland or Middlesbrough or something along them lines, like the Issa brothers, but I'll digress. So when Iman's mum and stepfather eventually broke up, she will undoubtedly be left quite a significant amount of cash because that's just what happens in the UK and in UK courts. This means that Iman has definitely had a platform to succeed. Iman states that he's a high school dropout, which again, I can believe. I mean, I don't suggest that you do the same thing, but we've got to just get some facts in, in line here. If you're dropping out of school or finishing school in the UK, you're going to do one of three things. You're either going to go and get a job ASAP, you're going to go to university and in debt yourself and invest in yourself to get something better in the long term. Or thirdly, go traveling or have pursuits or try and start a business of your own. But you're going to need something to do that. You're going to need capital. This means that Iman was obviously financially supported from a young age. I mean, no one clicks the fingers and a month in has healthy cash flow into their business and it can be self-sustainable like that. You need capital behind you. Even looking back to some of Iman's earliest videos, you know, he had expensive camera equipment, gym clothes and Beats by Dre headphones in a gym in the center of London, which would have been an extortionate amount for a membership as it's, you just simply do not have these things if you come from nothing. Iman has been financially supported from a young age. I'm not using this as a stick to beat Iman with. 
All I'm saying is that he's had a platform to succeed and a huge safety net to catch him in case he fails, which the vast majority of people simply do not have. He is different from his target audience. On the topic of Iman's early YouTube days, as you can see, he really tried to break into the sort of fitness market, but it's an extremely competitive and saturated market. But all this would change in 2017 when Iman stumbled across SMMA content, social media marketing agency content, and posted a few videos about it. Firstly, the YouTube algorithm actually picked up Iman's content on SMMAs, meaning more clicks, more subscribers, more view time, more ad revenue. And speaking of ad revenue, the CPM, which is the cost per milli, which is how much YouTube actually pays creators per thousand views, Iman noticed that it was substantially higher when producing finance and business related content compared to fitness and self-improvement related content. Iman basically figured out if he can influence people and show them how to make money with social media marketing agencies and other businesses, even if he doesn't really do it himself with that, then that's how he can make money. Get it? Him selling you the dream of how to make money and how to be like how he portrays himself as is how he's gonna make the money. He detailed how his own social media marketing agency made him millions and millions and millions by the age of 18, 19, 20. But then the question pertains, one, why did he close it? And two, where are these figures? These numbers aren't listed anywhere. It's literally Iman's word of mouth only. And you're telling me if you've got an extremely successful social media marketing agency that you're just gonna close it just because you felt like it? Of course you're not. There's only one reason why you close it, and that's because it's not performing very well. Meaning that Iman is probably not the agency guru that he markets himself to be. I'm gonna tell you something. In the UK, all limited companies must be listed under something called Companies House. And you can look up any company listed under Companies House on the website. I'll put the link in the description so you can find it yourself. On Companies House, the list of companies have to provide details such as who the shareholders and directors are, as well as number of employees, as well as sort of net assets. Seeing as we're on the topic of Iman Gadzi's companies, why don't we take a closer look at IAJ Media under Companies House? Now let's look at the capital and reserves metric, which is generally the total value of any investments in the business plus the net profit the company has accumulated from its trading activities. I'll give him some benefit of the doubt. This is only up to the 31st of January 2022. But let's be honest here, the company's total value after all trading and everything's done, what it's basically valued at is a grand total of 49,766 pound as of January the 31st, 2022. Now, it may have grown a little bit since then, but let's be honest, since he came into the crosshairs and really blew up, is it worth millions and millions of pounds? No, he is full of shit. A guy is full of shit and he is a fake guru. Iman clearly makes his money from selling vastly overpriced courses to his target audience, which is people who watch his videos. Let's take his most recent series, which is the Digital Renaissance. This is where his target audience are males between the ages of 18 to 26. And guess what? I've been between the ages of 18 to 26 before. And usually at this age, you're kind of a little bit disillusioned. You're either working a menial job, or you've just started your career and you're at the bottom rung of the corporate ladder or in entry level jobs, yeah? You probably want more influence, you want to be doing better, you want to be earning more money. I mean, we all want to be successful, to live a lavish lifestyle, to eat at the best restaurants in the world, to go to the best bars in the world, to be able to travel whenever, wherever we want. All you need is your laptop and your business, you know? You can take time off whenever you want. You can have your pick of any girl in the world. You can live just like Iman. He has the ticket, he knows how, because he's done it himself. And Iman lays it out for you. All you need to do is get online, get an online business, preferably a service-based business. Why not an agency? Anyone can do it. Minimal startup costs, minimal overheads. You don't need experience, you just need time. And if you're 18 to 26, what's the one thing that you do have? Time. Conveniently, Iman also sells a course on how to set up an agency. And at the time of recording, it's for a limited price of just $995 reduced from, I believe, around 2,000. <laughs> and even better than that, not only does Iman have a course teaching you how to set up an agency, he also has software called Agency Flow, which can help you run your agency. Iman's basically just selling you his course and his software. He doesn't give a shit about you. All he cares about is bank balance, which is fine, but he's not gonna say that. I'm just here to let you know that's ultimately all he cares about. And you're not learning from someone who is tried and tested in this industry, because as I've shown, his agencies don't pull in anywhere near the numbers that they say they do. What sells for Iman is his courses, 
that is it. This is a prime example of possibly the strongest marketing technique that there is, which is fear-based marketing. In essence, this is influencing your audience's psychology and trying to get them to take action on this induced anxiety and fear. In terms of the digital renaissance, this is a fear of being a slave to the system, which Iman can help you escape from for just a small price. You know, I will give Iman his credit though. The guy is a genius level marketer and a fantastic salesman. He really, really, really is. And his production quality on his videos is top notch, absolutely top notch. The guy knows what he's doing and knows his target audience extremely well, probably because he was once also a disillusioned young man. But please, not just Iman Gadzi, these other fake gurus, think about it. Why would this guy who supposedly has millions and millions in these agencies and blah, 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 why would he give away his secrets for his agencies and make the market more competitive? Companies were worth a shit, he wouldn't. He's just selling you the dream of being able to do what he pretends that he does. The guy just sells courses and that is it. His companies ain't worth shit. Now, to conclude, despite the mountains of bullshit that Iman preaches to his audience, there is an extremely extremely valuable lesson to be learned and that is that of resilience if you keep trying and keep trying and keep trying despite the amount of setbacks not feeling up to it rejections anything feeling worthless if you keep in pursuit of something and that's your goal and you give it your all you will eventually over time be successful keep hammering that nail trust the process don't rush the process now in terms of business and sales and creating a product it's basically up to you and your own moral compass how ethical you want to be whilst in the pursuit of actually making that money. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. One love.